I recently traveled across America and visited many intentional communities. Intentional communities are like communes from the 1960s. However, they're now inhabited more by people that just have a desire to live more sustainably and off the grid, where they leave less of a trace on the earth. Financially, people benefit because there's less utility bills to pay. If they're getting all their electricity from the sun, then they don't have to pay for that. If they're harvesting the rain, they're growing their own food, there seems to be less of a need for money. Most of these people are non-consumers. They're not buying into our cultural paradigm of consumption to keep the economy going. There are four tenets for intentional communities sharing, cooperation, nonviolence, and sustainability. It's a very do-it-yourself movement, so there's a lot of work, but there's also a lot of time for meditation, for family, for friends, for spirituality, for relaxing. There was a contentness and a happiness. People that live on intentional communities, I don't think are checking out in any way. Like a lot of people might think, oh, they're hippies and they're doing this or that, but they're not. They're professionals, they're artists, educators, farmers. These people felt more connected to nature, less detached than we do in the modern world where we're so busy with our iPhones and our iPads and our computers and trying to keep track of everything. If you're doing your electricity with solar, power, then you can only use electricity, say, you know, five or eight hours out of the day. In most of these places, since they're sharing, they'll have common spaces where they share their computers. Twin Oaks had like nine cars and you would sign up for when you wanted a car and usually there would be a group of people that were going to go to Charlottesville or Richmond because that's the closest city. Twin Oaks happens to be one of the oldest standing communes, which is an egalitarian environment. They make tofu and hammocks to sell to the public and that's how they make their money and everybody works and everybody gets paid equal. There's about, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars a month for spending in, on whatever, but you don't need a lot. So a lot of times that money can last even longer than that. Intentional communities have a lot of families. The children have a freedom to run around and play. This one little girl at Cedar Moon was playing with the goats and milking the goats and carrying the goats and just seemed to be having like a really good life. There are several different types of intentional communities. The ones I visited were eco-villages that are entirely off the grid. They're often on land trusts so that like Earth Haven is a land trust where you can buy piece of land for two people for $12,000. It's a 99 year lease, 16,000 for four people. And co-housing, which is I think the most palatable for most Americans, because it's people that are used to a nice style of living, but they want to have a sense of being in community. When I went to New Orleans after the storm, that's when I started thinking about intentional communities and how great of a need it is for us to live in concert with nature rather than conquer, to live simply so that others may simply live. These people that are living on these intentional communities are making real efforts to think seven generations ahead so that their children have a place to live. Their ability to harness nature's natural resources, I think, gives them a, a greater sense of higher purpose in, in connection to those around them.